Let's check in on how bond markets are trading. Go live now to Simon Michel from Fig Securities. Simon, hello to you. Hi, Dan. How are you? Very well, thank you. Now, of course, we did see that soft US data pushing investors into bonds. What's the impact on yields? Yeah, look, it's interesting. We saw uh, yields start to drift a little bit lower as we saw that money come in. Starting to see that pull back a little bit. Just looking at trading uh, today in Australia, uh, yields up a couple of basis points. That's already reflected in the equity markets there as people uh, are positioning for a, a, bit, a better return, locking in some growth. And also, I guess, demand for inflation-linked bonds increasing as well. That's right, Dan. So in this low-yield environment, we've seen people uh, look at going longer for yield and also going down and taking on a bit more risk. Uh, but also, we're seeing people lock into inflation index security. So these are bonds that pay you a fixed margin over and above the rate of inflation. So you get the protection of, uh, against inflation and uh, an income or yield above, uh, above that paid uh, to you directly. So investors are looking to lock some of these in, uh, given where we are in the cycle. So we've seen, uh, you know, deterioration in inflation expectations on the back of that oil price falling. Uh, but we do know that uh, you will see inflation start to re-enter these global economies on the back of some of this uh, stimulus we're seeing. So investors are looking to take advantage of that and, uh, and lock in uh, some additional return. And that's seen uh, demand increase on these inflation link bonds. And also you did hint uh, at that RBA meeting tomorrow. What are Aussie yields doing in the lead up in anticipation uh, of tomorrow's announcement from the RBA? Yeah, Dan, pretty quiet really. Um, it's an interesting one. I think uh, you know, we've had that move by the uh, People's Bank of China over the weekend where they lowered their deposit rates and lending rates. We've seen uh, a number of uh, central banks, I think it's up to about 20 now, dropping rates so far this year. So, you know, it really is a, a real area of concern for the RBA. Australia still has some of the highest nominal interest rates uh, compared to any other developed nation. So as investors globally look for yield, uh, Australia is a nice place to put it if you want a decent return. And that keeps demand for our dollar uh, quite strong and, and keeps the dollar higher than where the RBA would want it. So, you know, we could see them move uh, tomorrow. Uh, more likely they might move in the next couple of months. But uh, so long as you've got central bankers uh, around the world lowering rates, the RBA is going to have to follow suit. Have we seen the right data? And do you think we have the momentum to actually see the RBA cut tomorrow? Just how live is tomorrow's meeting for you? Yeah, look, I, I think given the action this uh, in February, I should say, uh, last month, I think they might hold. Uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, they might just sort of wait and see what the outcome of some of the moves by other central banks will be. Uh, you know, I think the dollar is hovering around that sort of high 70s. So, you know, they, they, it hasn't seen too much volatility in, in that. They've got to be very careful, uh, you know, obviously dropping rates down further. We've had the impact of a low uh, oil price hitting the Bowser. So people have have more money in the pocket, um, they're just not spending at the moment. They're, they're putting it into savings, they're holding back and that's more of a confidence issue. So, you know, I would be, uh, I'm going to say that the RBA will hold tomorrow. Let's also touch on the um, PBOC rate cut as well. First of all, did you expect to see this cut? And secondly, what is the PBOC looking at in China? If you could, I guess, just focus on one issue, what would it be? Look, I think it's growth over there. Um, you know, they've been running very high growth targets over recent years, generally around the 7.5%. That's likely to come in at 7. And to maintain that even at 7, we have seen action by uh, the Chinese government uh, over, you know, the, all of last year, essentially, just trying to uh, tidy up some of the areas of concern in the economy, some of the, the you know, the bubble areas, some of the over, over lending or, or maybe risky lending, try to pull back that a little bit. Um, I think this flows into that ongoing narrative that they're just trying to ensure that the economy has the, t the tools it needs and the settings it needs to maintain that higher growth target, even as we do see that pair back from historical averages. And also over in Europe, um, do you think, I guess, some of the uh, commentary, uh, some of that news flow that we've seen coming out of Greece is beginning to slow? We might see um, a reduction in some volatility? Uh, look, we seem to be. Everyone seems pretty happy with the Greece situation. Um, look, we just have kicked it down the road a little bit. Conversation, uh, you know, negotiations continue. Uh, I think people are very comfortable with the uh, quantitative easing that's about to hit there. 
Uh, rates are very, very low. Uh, most rates in, uh, in Europe are uh, in negative territory at the moment. Uh, so, you know, it becomes a global issue there because, uh, you know, as that money hits uh, the Eurozone, a lot of it's going to flow out into uh, the US, into countries like Australia, looking for a better rate of return than you can achieve in Europe. I think the biggest issue in Europe now is how do you get that money going down into the small and medium businesses to generate some activity, generate some growth in the uh, relative economies over there. Uh, you know, you can incentivise the banks as much as you want to lend it out, but unless the companies are prepared to step up and are confident they're going to be able to uh, put that money to good use and, and stimulate some growth, then it's going to be an ongoing problem for the ECB. Simon Michelle, live for us at Fixed Securities. Always appreciate it, Simon. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan.